Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about week 4 practice problems. In this week we have two problems, bottom-up and license plates. All right, we're going to start working with bottom-up and the main idea of these two problems is working with pointers. So let's see what we have here in bottom-up. Basically, we're going to receive an image, all right, that will be this Harvard bottom-up.bmp and we need to flip it, all right? Right now our image is not changing, so we're printing bottom-up instead of top-down and our goal here is to manipulate this BMP file and flip it, okay? So to do this, we have to understand what's going on inside of our file. So I'm already here running the debugger, okay? And as we can see here, I sent, when I was running the debugger, I sent debug50, the name of the file, the name of the image that will be the image we want to read, and the image where we're gonna uh, output, the image we want to write. So in here, we're having three command line arguments, and since it's we're exactly here, three, we're not, we're gonna skip this if statement. Then we have here this char in file argv1. So basically, once we run this line in here, as we can see, we're working with the pointer, okay? So our in file variable here is pointing to the memory of our argv1. What is argv1? Is the image bottom up dot bmp. So what is going on in here? This is where we have our variable argv1 and our image is allocated in this memory here. I created a fake memory 0x8. Zero, zero our in file variable is going to point to the memory. So remember that pointers normally start the, ver the value of the address of the variable. We normally, we don't store the, uh, the any integer, a string or anything else. We normally store the memory of the variable we want to check. In this case, the in file here is pointing to our argv1. So when we take a look in here, the value of our in file will be the memory of our argv1. So it will be the memory of our image, the input image. When we click in here, we will see that in file, it's a memory in of our image Harvard bottom up. All right. And in our output file, we're going to do the same. So now we're going to point to where is the image of our argv2. So where is the image of our Harvard top down. Again, when we're, since output is a pointer, we're going to start the memory of our argv2. Let's suppose it's on 0xv. So the value here of output will be the memory of our image. So once I click in here, we're going to see that output is the memory of our Harvard top down dot BMP. Now what is going on in the next line? Here we're opening the file we just saw. So we're opening the image we want to read. And as we can see in here, we have the R uh, input. So this means we're going to read. Once we read it, let's see our input. Now it's storing the address, some address, all right, for this file. And we're going to check if this variable uh, input the R, it's no. Since it's not, this means that we were able to open. If this was no, we wouldn't be able to open it. And we're going to do the same for the output file. So we're going to check if we can open up the output image and if we can write. As you can see here, we have W. And again, the same logic. If we're not able to open it, this means that if it's no, this means that we're not able to open it. Great. Now, as I mentioned, and here in NCS50, they let this very clear, we don't need to understand everything that's going on in our code. We need to understand the main concepts of what is going on in here. So basically, what is happening? They created three structs for us in our bmp.h. One struct that is called bitmap file header, the other is bitmap info header, and the third one is RGB triple. The RGB triple we're going to see in a bit, but these two first here, they're just creating the structure of the image, such as the width, the height, the size, the compressions and so on. So some things that are important for creating the image for us. So we don't need to worry about what exactly going on. In here, we're just creating a variable called bf that it's from this data type that CS50 created. And we're doing the f read to read what is inside of our image in this variable. So here we're getting all the type size reverse one, reverse two and off bits that they created here. And we're going to start in our bf variable. So if we click in here, we have some properties. Okay. And we have the same for bitmap info header bf. I. So here we're creating another variable with this struct and we're reading again the image we're receiving to store the data we want. So here after we read, we have the size with header, uh, height and some other things that will be important. And in the future, we'll see that this height in here, it's the key to solve the problem. Now we have this if statement. So this if statement is kind of uh, checking if we are receiving the correct format for an image. All right, CS50 gives some specification here if you want to check, but we don't need to worry about it because they are already created. Here is just an if statement to avoid if we have an unsupported file format. And since everything's working fine, we're going to skip this if statement. Great. Now, after we read the file, we're going to write. We're going to create a structure to write in our output file. So here we're using the same variable that we made here for bf and by to create the structure of our image. Here we're checking if there is padding and they have some calculation. And now this is where the magic goes. So here we're going to iterate over in file inline skyline. So basically, what are we doing? Let's suppose that we can work with an image as a grid. So each pixel here 
here it's one space in our grid so we can we're gonna check for all the rows and all of the columns and we're gonna work with each pixel in particular okay and we're gonna copy what is in that pixel from the the input image and we're gonna paste in our output image this is pretty much what's going on so here we're looping through the height so we're going to work with the rows and then we're gonna loop through the columns through the width so it will be our columns great and then we have this rgb triple this variable here with this that is a strict rgb triple as we saw in week three we can work with strict so strict we're creating a data type to store some properties for us and in here we have the rgb triple where it's storing the value for green blue and red that are exactly rgb so every time we're creating an image we can give some color to this pixel for each pixel of the image using red green and blue so in our particular case the structure here we will store one value for red one value for green and one value for blue now that we have this idea again let's just remind a little bit how strings work a struct in C is a way to group together multiple variables of different types into a single unit. A good way to think of it as creating blueprint for things. Just like how an architect creates a blueprint for a house, you can create a blueprint for an object in your program. A struct is defined using the keyword struct followed by a number and a set of variables in curly brackets. For example, here is how you might define a struct to represent a dog. This struct has two variables, a string name and an int age that represents the dog's name and age respectively. To create an instance of the struct, we use the struct name followed by the variable name and assign values to the variables of the struct. Here's an example of how to create an instance of the struct dog and assign values to its variables. So basically here we have the dog, my dog, and the other dog that is my other dog. Once you have an instance of this struct, you can access it variables using the dot notation. Then we see in our terminal the message, my dog's name is Spock and he is five years old, and my other dog name is Bunny and she is seven years old. With all that being said, now we know how prop this struct works, so here we can store the properties that we mentioned, red, green, and blue. And what is going on in here? So for every iteration, we're reading what is in our input image using the f read, and we're writing in our output image using f write. And we're gonna do this over and over again until we finish looping through each pixel, okay? So here we're just copying and pasting the whole image, and at the end, as we learned during the lecture, we need to close both images so we don't have any problem with that. And this is exactly what we're doing here and we're turning zero for success and that's it now we have two images we have the bottom up and we have the top down that is actually not top down we didn't flip anything at all how can we flip now so now let's work a little bit with our problem i'm gonna run over again our problem from our line until our line 54 and let's see what's going on one thing that is important to note is here I, I brought some, some drawings for you. Basically, when we're working with BMP images, we can change if the image will be top down or bottom up. You can search a little bit over the internet. They didn't mention during the lecture they're expecting you to search a little bit more to understand how BMP images work, just for curiosity. But every time we're working with BMP images, we can decide if the image will be top down, so the way that we're expecting, or bottom up, if we're starting to read from bottom to up. All right, every time we're working with bottom up, the height the height that we're gonna store is start to loop it's negative and when we want top down the height should be positive as i mentioned early in this video if we go until our line 54 after we read the properties here of our pi here the height of our image is a negative number so this is already telling us as we can see here in the drawing that since it's a negative number the the notation the orientation of this image will be bottom up instead of top down to make the fix to make this code work we just need to change the sign for the height so instead of being negative we're gonna make this positive and we have to do this before we're writing in the, our output image otherwise we're gonna create the wrong structure for our image all right so in here to make the fix we have to say that bi height is equals to negative the value of our bi height so this way we're doing the change actually is bi dot bi height and then this way we're gonna fix the orientation and it will be top down. Great, so let's see if it's working. Now let's run the, the, let's do make bottom up. And now, instead of running the debugger again, I'm gonna run it regularly and let's see the magic happening. So again, this is the image we are receiving and now let's see the out file image and now it flipped. So now we have the top down image as we wanted. Let's do the check 15, see if it's passing all the tests and then we can move on to the next problem. 
So as we can see, we got our green, and this means that we are correct. But before we move on for the next problem, I just want to highlight one important thing from where I find out the orientation of the bitmap, as I mentioned. Here, if you click in hints, they mentioned that we have to take a look at the bitmap info header struct that they gave to us. And if we read the documentation here, they are specifying each member of the syntax they built, and they are giving a good explanation here about the by height. So I highly recommend you taking a look at this link, and you will see that our answer is correct. Now let's move on to the license. So now in the problem license, we're going to read a file, all right, where it contains, um, I believe it's eight license plates. And we're gonna store this in a character pointers array, and then we're gonna read this out. They already give us some of the, the parts of the code here, all right? If you download the distribution code, you will see this file, license.c, but it had some bugs. Let's see what's going on so far. So if I run license, make license, and then I run here license, and we have 